let's start with something fun today. But before that, let me ask you a question. How do you usually calculate how much you're gonna spend when you are doing shopping? Either it's a grocery shopping or any other shopping like clothes or anything else. Are you usually just walk to the cashier and pay everything without you calculate it beforehand? Please write your answer in the comment section below. In this video, I would like to share the easy way to calculate our shopping, either it's a grocery shopping or any other shopping, but particularly it's a grocery shopping, because usually when we do grocery shopping, we are buying like um, so many items, like 10, 20, 30 items, and then uh, we lose track of it, and we don't know how much we're gonna spend. This is important to keep you stay on the budget that you already decided before. Other than that, it is also to realize if there is any mistake happen in the cash register, such as discount is not applied or if they double charge some of your items. So, without wasting any more time, let's start! First of all, the currency is vary from country to country. There are currencies that are small in number, such as Euro, US dollar, Australian dollar, Singapore dollar, and many others. There are also some that consider medium in number, like Japanese yen, Indian rupee, or there are some that are considered big in number, like Indonesian rupiah, Vietnamese dong. Why I why did I bring this currency up? Because the way we calculate it may be slightly different, but the method will remain the same. There are four simple steps to do this calculation. The first step, decide the number for rounding up and down. The second step, prepare your brain to remember the, the total amount in the nearest rounding up and down that you already decided in the first step. The third step, prepare to remember that you have a saving when you round it up and you have a debt when you round it down. The fourth step, if you already have a debt, you have to always round it up for the next item and remove the debt. If you have the saving, then you have to round it down the next item and remove the saving. Are you confused enough? So let's start with an example so you can get a clear idea. For this example, I will use Euro and will choose 50 cent for running up and down. Later, in the end of the video, I will shortly explain of how to use other currency with a much bigger number. Imagine yourself walking at the supermarket. You have 15 Euro budget to spend. You don't want to exit this budget and you also want to realize once you pay in the cashier if they make any mistake. So you walk down the aisle and then you found your first item and you grab your milk. It costs 89 cents but you should not remember it's at 89 cents instead 1 euro because you need to always round it up. Also, you have to remember that you have a saving because according to step 3, whenever you have to round it up, you have a saving. Is it clear enough now? No? Then let's continue. So you keep walking and then you found your favorite chips is now on discount. The original price was 2.39 and now it becomes 1.59. You are so happy. So then you grab two of them. Let me do the calculation. For the first chips, you have to run it down the 1.59 to 1.50. Therefore, you have to remove the saving. For the second chips, now you don't have any saving of them. You still have to round it down from 159 to 150. So now you have a debt. So now your total is 4 euro and you have a debt. Still confusing, right? Let's continue. Hmm. You're thinking that you should probably cook salmon baked with 
asparagus for today. You grab a package of salmon, cost 565 euro. I know, you should actually round it down to 550. But because you have a debt, you should always round it up according to the step 4. So now, you have to calculate salmon as 6 euro. And you have the 4 euro. So your total now is 10 euro. And you have to remove the debt because you already included in salmon. So you have 10 euro total. And that's all. Now you grab a package of asparagus. Cost 289 euro. According to the rule, you have to round it up. So now you round it up to 3 euro and you have a saving. So your total now is 13 euro and a saving. Clear? Hmm, you are thinking, I still have 2 euro budget according to my 15 euro budget. So you grab a big bulk of ice cream and it costs you 179 euro. Because you have a saving, so you have to run it up down according to the step 4. Therefore, it calculated at 150. So now your total is 14.5 without the saving on that. Simple, huh? When you finish your shopping and then you go to the cash register and you put everything and then they charge you with 16 euro, you immediately realize that something is wrong. Because your calculation is 14.5, so the, the real total should not be that far to 16 euro. So then you check the receipt and you realize that they didn't apply the discount for your favorite chips. So you ask the receipt and then they immediately fix it for you. So then the new total is 14.4. So if you see this calculation, you realize now that the total should be almost similar with what you calculate in your brain. Is it sound easier for you now or not? Please write in the comment below how do you think this method will work for you. As I promised earlier that I will explain shortly for the currency with much bigger number. Like Indonesian rupiah, you can take 5,000 instead of 50 cents because that more makes sense and then you can run it up and down according to the 5,000 for example an item cost 8,500 should be rounded up to 10,000 and an item cost 26,000 should be rounded down to 25,000 the rest of the calculation will remain the same so, let me recap quickly. The first one, decide the number for rounding up or down. It can be 50 cent or 5,000. Decide yourself. The second one, remember the total amount in the nearest rounding up or down. It should be 7.5, not 7.67. The third one, you have a saving when you round it up and you have a debt when you round it down. The fourth one. For the next item, you have to always round it up when you have a debt and round it down when you have a saving. Hi, so now I have a challenge for you. Let's try these methods when you do the next shopping. Either it's a grocery shopping or any other shopping like clothes or anything. But the best practice is for the grocery shopping because you will buy more items and then you have to calculate it faster and then let me know in the comments below how it goes for you is it easy? is it hard? thank you for watching until here and don't forget to press the like button if you like it and also subscribe to my channel please let me know if you have any other budgeting topic that you want me to cover in this budgeting series. See you and bye-bye.